Hello, my name is Dr. Marty Kishara, and I am an Associate Professor for Engagement in STEM at the University of Wolverhampton, a member of the award-winning STEM response team. And welcome to the first video in our physics catch-up series. And today I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction about what the series is going to be all about, what subjects we're going to cover, and I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to some of the symbols and units you might need when you go into your A-level studies or into your BTEC studies in physics. So this is what we're going to cover in our catch-up sessions for physics over the next week. We're going to look at symbols and units, and I'm going to do that with you today. We're going to look at energy, forces and motions, electricity, waves, and look at some essential maths for physics and how we can interpret data. So if you want to find out anything about the STEM response team, look at our resources, or find more of these videos for some of the other subject areas we're covering, just go and have a look at our website or follow us on social media, and you can see all our addresses here. So then let's have a quick introduction to symbols and units, and there are some important things that we need to consider in your studies in physics, and perhaps you're doing a BTEC in applied sciences and things like that, of course, or you might even be doing A-level physics, and we're gonna need these basics before we start to understand some of that content. So first of all, I'm just gonna introduce you to something called index notation. We're gonna look at something called the standard form, which is really, really important because some of the numbers in maths and physics can be very, very big or very small. We don't like to write all those zeros, so it's a way of getting around that. We're going to look at standard prefixes, standard base units, and standard derived units. And I'm going to talk more about that as we go through. So there are going to be a few changes from perhaps you might have seen at GCSE level. We need to use standard scientific notation to express numbers at all times if we can. We must use the correct symbols and the correct units for things. And we certainly need to use the standard form at all times. It is time for change. And actually, you might not have been considering those things before in your GCSEs, but now you've moved up a level of studies. You will definitely need to be using the correct language of science, particularly in your writing. So let's just have a look at index notation. It is very easy. It's just a different way of writing things. So before you might have wrote or written rather um, something like two meters per second. And actually you might have written that to M dash slash rather and, and S for seconds. And actually we don't express numbers like that in more advanced levels. Actually, we'd write it like in the example here, and that is just two ms minus one. Okay, that minus one just means per something, that's all. And you can express a whole variety of different units, particularly for speed and distance in this way. And we need to be able to start changing the way we write things, as I said, to this particular kind of style. So of course we need to start using that standard form as well. And it is a very, very convenient shorthand to express very, very small or very big numbers. And you can actually see we've got an example there and um, it's made of three different parts. We have the coefficient, which can be a whole number or a decimal. Then we've got the base, which is, off, which is most often 10. And then we've got the exponent, which is the small number which is hovering in midair in superscript. And it is very easy. So if we want to write the number one million, you can see it there, it's one and six zeros. And actually we can just express that using the standard form as one times 10 to the six. And actually all it does is depends on how the decimal point moves. And I will show you an example. So if you want to convert a, uh, a large number to, uh, 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 into scientific notation, all you've got to do is move your decimal point to the left. So we can see in the example there, we've got uh, 156,000 and the decimal point sort of at the end, because if you wanted to put the decimals in, it will be 156,000.0. Okay, so we've got that decimal point there. It's always sort of there, even though we might not write it. And all we need to do to express that in scientific notation, you just move that decimal point five points to the left and we can't have less than one so it's got to be 1.56 something so all we need to do is jump that decimal point over the numbers until it comes behind the one 
but every time we move the decimal point, be it up or down, we have to change the number of the exponent. All right, so in this case, the exponent will go up by five places. So we end up with 1.56 times 10 to the 5. Similarly, if we've got 0.0000053, um, actually, we can use scientific notation then to make that 5.3 times 10 to the minus 6 by simply just moving that decimal point six times to the right. And if we move to the right, the exponent must go down right, and become a minus number, as you can see here. So actually, we don't have to do any calculations. We don't have to do anything like that. All we've got to do is just move the decimal point around, and that's nice and easy. So at the beginning, I mentioned SI units or standard units. Now, an SI unit is, is really a, a, an internationally accepted and coherent system of physical units that are derived from something called the MKSA system. And that's the meter, kilogram, second and ampere system. And they're the basic units or again, the SI units. And actually, that is um, like an international standard, if you like of the fundamental quantities of length, mass, time, electrical current and temperature and so on. And we'll look at those in a bit more detail now. Before we move on to some of the, the more complicated things, we need to look at the SI prefixes, these internationally recognised prefixes. And most often they're used to talk about length or distance or amount. And you can see I've got a scale here, a metric prefix scale, and these are the SI prefixes for quantity length and length. And of course that would also include distance. Now you can see we've got some on the top line here and um, we go right from, um, we go right from uh, um, zero, if you like, to a centimeter. And we're moving to the right here. And we've got centi, all right, which is really a centimeter, all right, which is at 10 to the minus two. All right, so of course we have in millimeter, in milliliters or, or millimeters, of course, there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter, of course. But then we can move down that scale and get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the, the, the amount of, of zeros, if you like, the amount of the equivalences from the previous one changes as we go down. So in a micrometer, there are a thousand millimeters and so on as we move down this scale. So we go from milli to micro to nano to pico, and right at the end of this scale, which has just fallen off the edge actually, um, is at 10 to the minus 15, we have something called um, femto, which is, you can have femtometers, femtograms, and so on, and that's a very, very, very small, and right after that, there's an even smaller one called, called atto, and that's really, really small. And, um, and as we move back up the line, we've got the things that you might recognize like kilo, like kilograms, we've got mega, giga, like gigabytes on your computer, or again, tera, which is te like terabytes on your computer. And you can see just how they all relate to each other by the exponent and the, um, the numbers that are shown there. Now, there are some ones that we don't use very much, and they're things like deca and deci and hecto. We don't really use those um, very much. You might see sometimes centiliters, you might see deciliters and so on. Occasionally, you do see those measurements, but they're not, not ones that are very commonly used. So they are the SI prefixes. Now, when we talk about the base units, I mentioned those. These are the things that, that everything else are derived from. And they're standard units of measurement, and they're defined by this international system of units. And that's really what SI stands for. Now, there's the sev seven of these base quantities, and they are the things that everything else can be derived from. And this is a table just showing those. And you can see we've got the meter, the kilogram, the second, the electrical current or the ampere. We've got kelvins for thermodynamic temperature, the amount of a substance, which is measured in moles. And then we've got luminous intensity, which is called a candela. And you've got some of the very basic symbols. Sometimes these can be denoted by Greek letters also. Now, we can derive every other thing from a combination of these. This is why they're called base units. But we said we can derive other units, so we have an entire list of derived units. So what's a derived unit? Well, it's a combination of base units to express a physical quantity, as it says here. 
So a really good example here is velocity is the distance traveled per unit of time. So the derived unit for velocity is meters per second. So you can see how we've combined two of those base units to actually give us a derived unit to express velocity. Now this isn't by any means an exhaustive list of the derived quantities. There are many more like for acceleration and things like that. But as you can see, we've got some here like frequency, force, pressure, energy, electrical charge, and so on. And, um, and again, these are all made from combinations of those initial base units. Again, the symbols are shown there. And as I said, they can be expressed like we've said for velocity, which isn't on this list, as meters per second. And that's the units that they would be measured in. So I hope that's just given you a really brief introduction to some of the very basic symbols and units that you might need. Remember, we need to be starting to talk the language of the next level of your scientific studies in physics. So we need to be using that scientific notation and all the correct units you need to do in your formulas and your work during your class. Thank you.